Welcome everybody. Today I want to talk to you about systemization. Have you ever worked in an organisation where you're, you have a job that several people do repeatedly yet they do it slightly differently? Have you ever noticed that as a result of that you get inconsistent outcomes, changeable results? Have you ever wondered what that costs your organisation in terms of time, in terms of missed targets or raw material usage? Or even worse than that, the health and safety risk that you might be putting upon your team. And yet, there's a simple solution to this problem. And I'm going to share with you today a project that I led within a distribution network that really focused in on systemizing the training materials. It resulted in a huge amount of time saved, cost saved, and increased and improved health and safety standards. So let me tell you a little bit more about me and my experience. I used to work for one of the UK's largest distribution networks. It's a household name I'm sure you've all heard of before. And my role was to make sure that across our nine sites we had systemized and standardized training materials wherever we could. So I approached this in five main stages. First of all, I knew I needed to create and share a vision with the management team. Second thing, once we had the sign off with that vision, we needed to make sure that we kept the main thing the main thing. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about what I mean by that. The next was managing resistance to the change that was happening, and then involve and leverage the teams that I was working with. And finally, the most important thing was to test and measure and just keep improving and keep moving the whole process forward. So let me start with that first thing, sharing the vision. We knew that we needed to map out a project and get agreement in principle with the main key stakeholders within the distribution network. We had to work with each of the nine distribution sites, the management teams, the training team in particular, and other key stakeholders that may have been involved to make sure that they bought into exactly what we were trying to achieve. We were definitely focused on a win-win outcome. The distribution network was always going to win because we could save a huge amount of costs in systemizing these processes. The sites were going to benefit because they received training material that they didn't even have to write. They just had to learn and train it out to the teams. Once we'd done the vision and we'd got agreement on our project plan, the next thing was to focus in on the main thing. And what do I mean that by that? keep the main thing the main thing. That is really prioritising where we knew we were going to get big wins quickly and it started some momentum in the process. So we focused in on those processes that uh, were causing us a high number of health and safety issues for example uh, that, or a high volume of people were going through one particular department and that was going to give us the win. It was going to make sure that it paid for our project and the time that we were putting in up front. And that was really key for us. So we, we really targeted those first. So the third thing I want to talk to you about is managing resistance to change. I'm sure when you've experienced it or whether you've implemented it yourself in your organisation, you'll know that there is usually some resistance to any change that you're making. And that's a normal human reaction. Our job is to make sure that we work and lead the people through that change. So in my experience in this example, what we had were different distribution sites creating training material for very similar processes across the UK. And some of the comments that we would hear were that it will only work this way in our site or this is the way we've always done it and they tended to be quite uh, subjective comments and once you actually got into the detail of the objectivity of the process and whether things could be changed uh, you usually found that they could and we focused in on those things some things couldn't and that, and that was fine uh, but what we did when we actually got the groups together to ensure that we when we shared the vision with them and they could understand the benefits was that we shared out the work amongst the group and we got everybody involved in it and that meant that they had ownership and accountability and empowerment to really create the materials for their site and for the rest of the network and that really worked for us. 
So the fourth thing that we did was involve and leverage the teams. I spoke to you a little bit about that when we were managing resistance to change. But effectively what we did was we had representation from all of the nine sites in one room together. And that was our project team. Within that project team, we, we had work streams. And with those work streams, we shared them out amongst the group. Now that was based on a volunteer basis, but, but typically you would have uh, a site that would, was doing particularly well with the process. Like there was no reason of, of giving a site that didn't even have the process written down and implemented in, on their site the whole of that job role to go and create the training materials. So we did it on a volunteer basis. That meant that we had accountability, uh, we had engagement, which was really, really key. And we had responsibility to make sure that, that those processes were written, tested and implemented. And we went through each work stream along the way. What it meant from a leveraging the team and time perspective was that we could very quickly get through the processes as we farmed them out through our work streams to the different sites. And all of a sudden, a site that maybe had one or two processes that were systemized ended up having 10 or 12 very, very quickly through this, through this way. So the fifth thing, the fifth thing is test and measure. This to me is possibly the most important part of anything that you do in your business. Ask yourself, how much do you test and measure what you're doing? When we were rolling out all of our materials, one of the things that we definitely put in place was the testing of those processes, ensuring that they were landing properly on the site, that the people who were experiencing those processes through the training, we got great feedback or you know, what was the feedback that we got from how could we improve it, that it was hitting and delivering the required KPIs for the department. You know, where, whichever department that was on, we had to make sure that the training materials got people to the performance level that they required to get to as quickly as possible. So we definitely had to test and measure on, on multiple levels for that to happen. And every time we analyzed the results and we took them back, it gave us opportunity to continuously improve and enhance. And as we improved and enhanced as a project team, we agreed that if there were any improvements that could be implemented across our sites to ensure that everybody benefited from that efficiency and, and systemization, then they would take on those changes too. So just to wrap up then, and take you through that, those steps one more time. So we shared the vision, we got the key stakeholders together to make sure that we got buy-in and we had the right plan. We kept the main thing the main thing. Always focus on the thing that's going to give you the best return on investment and prioritise that. We managed resistance to change and work with the teams to make sure they were comfortable and supported as they went through the changes we were implementing. We involved and leveraged the teams. It really made sure that that involvement and that engagement was the driving force behind delivering what we were trying to achieve. And finally, we tested and measured everything we did. We had to prove that what we were implementing was better than what we had before. So the result for us was a huge amount of saving on cost, on time, and our health and safety results improved dramatically as a consequence of us doing this systemization of training material. And that's why I was so passionate about this project. It was a win-win for everybody that was involved. So finally, I'd be really interested in any systemization project you've been involved in in your organization. What did you do? How did you approach it? What were the pitfalls? What were the results, the positive results that came from it? And share that in the comment box and with the LinkedIn community so yeah, we can learn from each other. I'm continuously learning and I encourage everybody around to do the same thing. And also for those people who are about to embark on a systemization project, what is it that you need to think about? What is it that you need to do? If you want some support and want a conversation with me, please get in touch with me. The best way to do that is to link in message me or contact me via email directly on edcooper at actioncoach.com. So I've been Ed Cooper, Action Coach. Thank you for listening.